Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial with Frozen Foxy. Today we will be learning how to create thumbnails with incrementing numbers very quickly. Numbering individual thumbnails can be a very tedious process and I like to do things as easily and quickly as possible, so I decided one day to figure out a way to automate the process without changing the numbering manually. Photoshop does provide a method of doing this through spreadsheets, but I'm cheap and not particularly artistic, so the programs I use are completely free. I prepare my thumbnail images using GIMP and number them using Image Magic, along with a simple command line loop. Download links for both programs can be found in the video description. The syntax I use in this tutorial will be for Windows, but Linux and Mac can do this just as easily with a few syntax changes. I'm sure if you're using those platforms, you're probably savvy enough to make those changes on your own, so I won't cover them in this video. First, we'll want to use GIMP to create our basic unnumbered thumbnail. If no logo exists on the thumbnail, I might look around for a stylized one to overlay on the image. For example, for Final Fantasy Tactics, I took an image with the characters and an image of the Final Fantasy Tactics logo, with an alpha channel background to overlay on a separate layer. This is the image that I came up with for the thumbnail. All of my thumbnails are always 1280 by 720 resolution and saved as a JPG or JPEG with an image quality of 85. With that created, I now create a text layer in GIMP and fill it out with hash 999 to get an idea of how the text will work with the image and where I want the text to be. Next, I zoom in to get general pixel coordinates of the text. These numbers won't be exact when we use them, but they will give us a general idea of what numbers to use with image magic. Fonts with unusual width or height may cause general numbers to be off by a lot. I'll write these down in Notepad for reference purposes. In the directory where our basic thumbnail is stored, hold shift on your keyboard and right click on an empty space. This will present a hidden option called open command window here that we will click. A command window with the directory you are currently in will open. Keep in mind image magic must be installed first for these following commands to function in the command window. Before we create our first test image, we can print out a list of possible fonts image magic is capable of using. Type convert hyphen list font greater than font.txt. The greater than sign pipes the output of this command to a file named font.txt for easy reading. The file will contain all fonts installed on your computer and will give us exact names to use in our syntax. I will be using a font size of 152 and Orbitron Black, which is the equivalent of Orbitron Heavy in GIMP. Now we'll create our first test image to see if we like the pixels we picked out from the image. If we don't, we can adjust them as necessary. I will also be adding a shadow to the text, which will be plus 5 pixels to each of our coordinates. Plus or minus 5 pixels for the shadow will shift where the shadow is cast in the image. I will be using fft.jpg as our image name. Type convert image name hyphen font font name hyphen point size 152 hyphen annotate plus shadow pixel width plus shadow pixel height hash 1 hyphen fill white hyphen stroke black hyphen stroke width 2 hyphen annotate plus pixel width plus pixel height hash 1 image name 1 dot jpg and press enter. This will print hash 1 on our image at about the same pixels as we saw in GIMP as seen here. This is a bit complex, so let's break down what this command just did. Font declares the font name, point size declares the font size, annotate declares where to write and what to write, fill declares the font color, stroke declares a color to outline the font in, and stroke width declares how thick the outline should be. By default, the color of your text starts as black, so I do not declare black when I create the shadow first. I only declare white when I am overlaying the actual text onto the shadow. So this causes the shadow text to be created first, the white text to be placed on top of it, and the white text to be outlined in black. If we are satisfied with the result, we can move on to the next step. Otherwise, alter the pixel width and height till the location of the text looks right. Now, to do this with a large number of images, we will need a little knowledge of a for loop. A for loop tells the computer to repeat some command till a specific number of times is reached. Depending on the flag used, the for loop will react differently. Let's try it out. Type for forward slash L percent F 
in open paren 1 comma 1 comma 3 end paren do convert image name hyphen font font name hyphen point size 152 hyphen annotate plus shadow pixel width plus shadow pixel height hash percent f hyphen fill white hyphen stroke black hyphen stroke width 2 hyphen annotate plus pixel width plus pixel height hash percent f image name percent f dot jpg and press enter now we should have three images with one two and three printed on them in the same style as our test this is also complex so let's break down what we did with the for loop we use the forward slash l flag this means we are creating a set of numbers from beginning to end and stepping from one number to the next by a specific step amount in parens we typed the beginning number the step number, and the ending number. So we start at 1 and add 1 to it till we reach 3. We used percent %f to signify the current number in our loop. So percent %f will equal 1, then 2, then 3 as the command repeats in the loop. Because of this fact, we used percent %f to represent the number we want it to print out instead of an actual number, which causes it to change each time the command is issued, creating three unique images with incremental numbers. Now that you have three images, let's say you want to continue from where you left off without touching the first three. We can easily do this by changing the beginning and ending numbers and leaving everything else the same. For example, let's say we want from 4 to 80 to be created. If your command window is still open, simply press the up arrow on your keyboard to recall the last command. Then use the left and right arrows to move the cursor back till you reach the numbers in the for loop. Change the beginning number to 4 and the ending number to 80 using either your backspace or delete key to erase the old number. Press enter when the command is changed and wait for it to finish. Once finished, you should now see images numbering from 1 to 80 if we include the three done with the first command. It's a pretty simple way of getting incremental numbers done very quickly with very little tedium involved. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that it helps you out in speeding up your thumbnail creation process. See y'all later!